Podcast Talk, and you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 58. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Good evening, Norman. Hello. How are you, Daniel? How are you? Uh, not too good. Really? No. What happened? School on Saturday. End of story. <laughs> Okie dokie dokie, then. And our guest for this week is Kelvin Devscar. Hello, everyone. Hello, Kelvin. How are you? Uh, fine. So, anything, <laughs> anything exciting happened to you today? When I have a few friends, and that is the end of my story. Wow. <laughs> Short and simple. I like it. Short and simple. Good day, yeah. So, before we start the show, we need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite pony? Rainbow Dash. Any reason why? When I first became a brony, it was actually tied between Pinkie Pie, Lava Shy, and Rainbow Dash. But, as Rainbow Dash is brony, the way her personality works... It's just appealing to me. Because <laughs> I've always liked these kind of um, competitive yet soft-hearted characters. That's how most of... Um, like, if the show had these kind of characters, that's usually my favorite. Any example of any other characters like that? I, I had it. one, but it just slipped out my mind. I don't even remember. Like, hold on. Uh, okay, no, it's not so bad. <laughs> uh, I, I had one. It was from X-Men. Uh, Rogue? The very con- Hello? Yeah, is it Rogue? Um, no, it's Gambit. Oh, Gambit. The very um, confident, cocky kind. But at the same time, he's willing to sort of go out of his way to protect the X-Men. Like, he doesn't just leave them alone to die. He actually cares for them somewhat, especially Rogue. So but then which... again, that's because Gambit's a womanizer. Yeah, true indeed. But which X-Men is this? Is it um, Evolution or uh, the 90s X-Men? Um, I think both. I, I watched both, and Gambit was my favorite in both, just for his attitude. And in both in both series, his attitude was almost exactly the same. Okay, so true. there's not much of a difference, I guess. So it's, is it safe to say that Rainbow Dash took Gambit's place in your heart when you started watching Ponies? I'm not sure if I would say that. <laughs> I, I guess they both occupy the same place in my heart as being the, <laughs> as being the um, competitive yet caring persona. All right, Rodas, you heard it. Bring out the crossovers. <laughs> I think there is a reason why, hold on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But chances are with the, with the pony bang of best, almost confident that there's going to be a Gambit pony. Hey, I was right! Oh boy. <laughs> so anyway, moving on we to the... We all need a bit of Rainbow Dash in our life. True, true. So anyway, moving on to the next question. What is your favourite episode? Ah, uh, that's like... Oh, that's not fair. That's like asking, uh, don't, don't worry, don't worry. We allow multiple choice. That's like asking which of my... Ch- which child is my favourite. Um... As I said, uh, we have multiple choice. I'm gonna have to go with um, what was that daring do episode? Uh, read and weep. Yeah, read and weep. I just love the episode. Was and, it? Uh, yes, it was, was daring do, not Mary Duel. Yeah, daring do. Yes, oh, daring do, Mary Duel. Heard Mary Duel. No, ah. Mary Ma- Ma- Duel is the superhero Ma- Batman, Ma- and daring yeah. do is the Indiana Jones crossover thing. Yeah, I love the Indiana Jones one. That that, that episode. That and uh, feeling pinky key. <laughs> Pinky Keen was just it was just I couldn't stop laughing at how pinky it was and it yeah. was just so it was just so good the whole episode and plus you get to see a giant hydra chase colorful equity so you know that's always a plus mm, okay I heard a lot of people say that they don't really like the episode because of the whole moral or the lesson it's like Dear Princess Celestia we believe that's about it yeah um yeah, I didn't really like the moral, but um, if I'm not wrong, Lauren Frost herself said that if she had the chance, she would rewrite that moral because she knows that it came out well. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, the first thing that came to my mind, and I, I'm not going to tread on anything like touchy here, but the first thing that came to my mind was religion. It was just like, uh, you just have to believe. I was like, religion? Whoa. <laughs> 50 Cent is a religion? Yeah, I, I mean, where do I sign up? Yeah, but, I, I um, think it's more onto the fact where um, you just have to trust sometimes. You have to trust some, that something is just like that. Yeah, you it, don't need to question it. Yeah. Questioning it will bring nothing for you. It's, it's true. It's true. Like how your friend picks a booster pack and always get that foil card. Always happens. Oh, yeah, yeah. Always happens. Uh, don't ask why. He uh, he happen. even don't know how to answer it. <laughs> yeah, screw it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. moving on to the third question, how did you become a brownie? It was actually really weird. Like, um, I was browsing 
Funny Junk. Uh, I've been browsing Funny Junk for like, I think since 2007 or 2006, back when Funny Junk was like new. But I'm going to be like, old man. Go ahead. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, um, uh, I remember I saw so many pony posts and I was like, oh my god, guys liking ponies, like, oh no, like, there's no way that they're genuinely liking. They're probably liking for like a satirical reason, they're making fun of it, like, you know, a lot of other cartoons. And I was like, there's no way that these guys are genuinely liking ponies. So, um, I actually didn't check it out for very long. I remember I saw when the Derby clip came out. Oh my god, that, that Derby clip just, it was so cute. Like, I couldn't stop watching it. Which one? Which one? Um, you know when Derby was talking? Oh, that, okay. like, that During the episode, as soon as that day came out, I saw the episode shoot up to the front page and I was, the first post I saw, I was like, okay, I'll give like this clip a shot. So I just gave it a watch. I loved it, but I didn't want to edit it. You know, <laughs> I was completely denied. I was like, no. This is not happening. I will not watch an episode of MLP because there's no way I'm going to like it. Mm. And then um, I remember I went to YouTube and I saw an episode. I saw Turn About Storm on my suggestion box, which um, for all of you that don't know, it's um, Phoenix Wright and My Little Pony Crossover. And I love Phoenix Wright. It's one of my favorite games. So I, I went to check it out and I was pleasantly surprised at how well the characters are and how interesting it was. So I said, okay, I'm going to give it one episode, like the first episode of a shot, and I'm probably not going to like it. I watched it, and I finished season one, and most of season two in like a day and a half. Yeah, it always yeah. flies like right. that. And I was like, oh crap, what have I got to myself into? <laughs> so, so you joined the fandom pretty late. I joined it when the most recent episode, like uh, I joined it on the Saturday that Dragon Quest was released, the 21st episode. Wow. So you joined the fandom pretty late then? I we... joined it in late... I think I joined it in 20th of March, 2012, yeah. Of last year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, pretty late because um, most of the guests we have either joined during the start of Season 2 or mid, yeah. you know, late of Season 1. But Around the um, around the July to September 2011 period, right? It's around there. Or the January 2012 <laughs> Yeah, I joined really late, and I was like, wow, season 2 is going to end. I, oh, what happened? <laughs> yeah. And funny enough, you, you're kind of prominent on the Twitterverse. Uh, I tweet stupid stuff. <laughs> I don't I wouldn't say prominent, because I was kind of only at 239. I just try to talk to people that seem genuinely nice, and I just want to get to know them better. So I just send them some tweets away, and just... And a lot of people on Twitter are so funny with their tweets. A lot of movies. I just... <laughs> they're always posting um, such funny stuff. And it just makes it just makes my day to see like a chain of people replying to each other. Just replying with um, all of this world stupid and funny stuff. It's so cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about that in the interview section. So moving all on right. to my last question is... How do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Well, they sort of question it at first, but they just let it be. They don't insult me or um, make fun of me. They just let me do my thing, and I don't really um, rub in their face that I'm a brony, so. Okay, cool, cool. So, you keep it balanced and just say, yeah, I watched the show. No, leave me alone. I'm watching the uh, show. It's sort of like, if they ask, yeah, I'll just say, uh, yeah, I watch MLP, and I'll just leave it like that, unless they ask further. If they don't ask, I kind of just don't say anything. Well, be prepared because we're going to ask you now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. I got, I'm not ready for this. Don't want to ask me before. Oh, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I'm still not ready. <laughs> and we can ask you on Twitter and read your responses, but that will be a little boring. True. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think I can uh, do the interview in 140 words. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd be pretty good if I could do that. Didn't you write something down? Didn't you write a tweet before saying, wow, I like Twitter. I can uh, write in 140 characters because of... And then it cut off. Yeah, I just cut off. <laughs> just trust. Just I ran out of letters. I was lazy. <laughs> I like that joke. But anyway, um, moving on to the next topic is housekeeping. And in housekeeping, well, last week we interviewed Anne Lee He, the, voice, uh, the Swedish voice actress, for Swedish Spitfire. yeah, Swedish Spitfire and Swedish Tigress for oh, okay. Kung Fu Panda yeah. 2 and you can listen to the interview in the link below 
So, guys, do please listen to it because I sang in it. And if you like hearing me sing Life of the Cuff, um, do go. <laughs> Uh, anyway, moving on to the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, Megan McCartney answers question about season 4 on Twitter. Season 4 has been announced and it will premiere in the winter of 2013. Many fans have their concerns about the upcoming episodes. In a recent Twitter post, Megan McCartney has addressed some questions and concerns that the fans have while not revealing or spoiling anything for season 4. All of the questions and answers will be posted in the show notes. So, I'll take a few snippets of some interesting questions. Question, um, like this one. A lot of bronies are upset about Elecon Twilight. Without giving anything away, do you think season 4 will keep everyone happy? No comment. Her answer was yes. And another good one here is, Will we ever see Rarity as the central character again? She stole every scene slash episode that she was in this season. And her answer was yes. Well, there was a few good ones and a few silly ones. Like, um, give me, let me see. Okay. How many Elecons should we be expecting? Her answer was 53. So, so anyway. that's going to be the series finale. Every pony becomes an Elecon. Yay. Oh, I have a theory on that one, but never mind. So links can be found in the show notes. So guys, um, have you guys read... Megan's answer to some of the questions? Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah. I have. I read, I read all of them. Well, yeah, I read all of them. I had to be careful that they're not backdated to April 1st, otherwise I'll be messed oh, up. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I double-check everything and they're not back yeah, to April Yeah, I, I know you did, but you know, for me, when I was reading off the Twitter feed, I had to look at, okay, this is not an April 1st statement where Andrew Lipman is off the show and Emily Larson's voicing every pony. <laughs> Oh yeah, man, that, that's the best. Like, I even like the story plot about Rarity fighting a giant crab. <laughs> oh, I know that joke, but that's one. Oh, that goes way back to E3 2007, doesn't it? Or 2006. And the next news topic is story of the blank animation teaser. So, have anybody here heard about the flash game story of the blanks? Uh, yep, and I played it. But that was quite long ago. True, true. It was the generation one of Brony fan projects back yeah. in the days. So anyway, they're making a animation for it. Or they're making a short film or movie or however you want to call it. A group going by the name of Long Tail on YouTube released the trailer a few days ago. And links will be provided in the show notes. So Kelvin, you explained uh, off the air just now about... Uh, how the story of the blank thing work? Mind explaining it again to us? Uh, story of the blank is is a bit flash game that's available online. It's uh, more of like an interactive story than anything, and it's just simply Apple Bloom going to a village and finding that all the ponies in the village have blank blanks. And then you know there's story continues and all that. Uh, but I won't spoil anything. True, true. I've seen a uh, gameplay of it and. LPs of it, and it's pretty interesting. I'll explain it in this sentence. It's like Silent Hill. Very scary and very unknown. Yeah. Wait, I think it's very scary. It's, 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 I, I don't know. To me, it's not that scary. Yeah, if, if, I, I think you need to be immersed into the world, get into character. Yeah, but to me, yeah. it's kind of scary. And, ugh. and when you get caught... <laughs> yep. So do check it out and let's hope this animation is awesome because I, I can feel that this is going to be scary if they do it right. Well, nice. It will be, it'll be interesting to see how horror pony is going to come out. I mean, they're horror fanfics, but horror animation, that sounds interesting. True, true. I mean, we, we had a few, like we had set fix where you got snowdrop, you got crossover fix, that double rain boom. Now you got um, horror with a story of the blank, so it, it covers all the gambit. Yeah, it does. Yay, let's move on to the next topic. And in the next topic is guest time. Our guest for this week is Kelvin Descar. Having fun yet, Kelvin? Yeah, it's uh, having quite a bit of fun. <laughs> Sorry for the derpness because... Uh, it's okay. Yeah, I am derpy, I am kind of having a sore throat, my brain is not in the right place, but... I'll, I'll do anything for the show. Almost Yay. anything. 
So anyway, um, Kelvin, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Well, um, my name is Kelvin. Uh, so yeah, um, you might know me on FIM Fig as Death Scar, or you might know me on Thriller as at um, Normandy Jaden. Uh, and what I do is I write code in the package. Oh, that's interesting. Um, not only that, you're also a Twitter brony, right? Uh, yes. A very prominent one at that too. Yeah, I would say prominent. Oh. I just I just tweet um, my rather confused and stupid thoughts. Oh, <laughs> that may be true, but if you know the big people, your name keeps popping up, and that's cool. Uh, I just had a talk with that kind of thing. It's because they're really awesome people. It's so funny, it's so easy going. They're, sure. they're just really cool people. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree. Most of the people that I and you follow are awesome, like Osaka, yeah. Jack, Black Griffin, Ellie Monty. Yeah, most. Yeah, most I, if I were to list down all the people I follow on Twitter, this show will just be a Twitter podcast. <laughs> true that, true that. So anyway, you say you write fanfics, right? So how did you get into writing? I've actually been writing like a few originals like since 2009. I just kind of just had this three idea in my head, so I decided to try to turn it into a story. Um, and during my holidays, I wrote um, one chapter a day continuously for like a month. But in the end, it, the, the quality was fucking crap, and the storyline didn't make half sense. But, but that was how I got into writing. So when I joined the Pony Fandom, I realized that there was a website dedicated solely to um, fanfiction for my little pony. And one thing I don't like about fanfiction.net is that fanfiction.net is so wide with so many games, animes, cartoons that you can't really find good criticisms of people reading your story, especially if you're writing for a source that's not that popular. So I decided to give it a shot and I started writing out some stories off the top of my head. And I got criticism. I improved as a writer, and I'm really thankful for that. Awesome, awesome. Because I, I, I'm looking through here, and you written like, uh, let me see, one, two, three. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. I, I, 13, if, I think. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. If I if I were to count them, I'll be looking like a jerk for not knowing nah. the top, knowing um, knowing it off the top of my head. Mm. It's okay. <laughs> I wrote a total of fifteen stories. Fifteen okay. stories. And, and one of your latest one is about Black Griffin. <laughs> oh yeah, memoirs of Black Griffin. <laughs> oh, it was just so fun to write that. Actually, it was really, really very fun to write to write that. You know what you should do? Write about a shipping fit between Griffin and Ellie Monty. <laughs> I think Griffin will kick my ass. No, I think he'd like it. <laughs> I, I think he will like it. I might, but that all depends on whether he allow me. Whether he allow me. Um, do, uh, it. do that because I wouldn't want to do it and you know writing shipping is a little punchy especially when you're dealing with real life people oh uh, is, uh, have you seen uh, some of their tweets <laughs> they're really <laughs> <laughs> so funny yeah oh. Oh, you can just run with that but anyway so when when writing um, how do you what, what inspires you to write it's hard to say um Inspiration for me comes from a lot of different sources. Last time it used to go, it used to come from uh, draw friends. Like, I would just scroll past draw friends. There would be this one picture, and suddenly, like, pieces of the story would just fit in my mind. And I take that picture, I ask the artist for permission to use it, and if I got permission, then I'll start planning, writing the story, stretching it further. And yeah, that's how, that's where my inspiration comes from. It, it can also come from um, songs or other stories, uh, it wrote, it works the same way. Okay, cool. So, uh, for example, also from other bronies like Black Griffin. <laughs> oh yeah, because uh, he showed me, I was on his stream and he told me like, he had this Griffin OC, but um, he actually made a pony one and he he was deciding on the cutie mark whether to put it as a Griffin or a musical note and he was debating, so he said that I told him that if he puts it as a griffin, um, I can just uh, write a fanfic about um, the reasoning behind it. And, uh, and it just came to me, because the idea just came to me, pieces, plot points, all of it just started to fit. 
And even though he changed his, he chose the cutie mark to be the musical note. I still wrote it for him because it's such a free and expanding idea that I really wanted to run with it. Okay, cool. So you say that um, some of your ideas come from uh, draw friends or yeah. other things that you see. So and and with an interesting one here with uh, memories of a griffin. You say that you yeah. you see. You see the picture and you can see plot points, you can see this, you can see that. So how does that work? Like, I, I, I wish I knew because um, it hasn't been happening for me recently. That's why my writing has kind of slowed down. But when it happens, I have no way to control it. It, was, it would just be that one picture that has this setting and suddenly my mind would just go, Hey, here's an idea. Oh, here's how this idea would turn out. Oh, here's another plot point, another plot point, another plot point, or another plot point. Okay, go, go right. And I do. It just comes and goes. I have no control over it. So I just hope that more of it comes soon. True, true. I, I've i been meaning to read some of your stuff, man. Like, oh. there, there, there's this one, the warmth in our hearts. It's, I think, yeah. uh, Heartwarming Eve, sorry? Oh, yeah. I, I wrote that for Heartwarming Eve for Christmas. And I, um, put up, I put it up on Christmas. It's a very innocent thing. No, no action, no, um, no action, no shipping, nothing. Just... Six friends, slice of life, flat. Um, that's what it is, and that's what I want to keep it as. Very true to the theme of MLP as I could, as the best that I could do. Okay, true. I mean, sometimes the, the simple stories in life are the best. Like, uh, I, I want to read something heartwarming and um, something simple and making me smile. And, wow, oh, <laughs> this looks good. I, I should read, but my, my big list is really too much. Like... It, when I have this free time, oh, I also will try reading this. And suddenly, my Gmail pops up, say, this story has an update. This story has an update. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and okay, you gotta read that one. Priority first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. But I, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in my read, read later list. Right now, I have to read... Well, right now, i got nothing. I, I've done almost all of it. Right now, I'm trying to read Luna's Dreamscape Journey. It's a comedy slash random fic. And I love comedy. <laughs> uh, I love comedy too. But I'm not a good comedy writer because the jokes that look, seem funny to my head when you put them on paper, you know, they just don't work. Because vocal comedy, uh, paper comedy, and cinema comedy is all extremely different. So... Yes. What when while a joke might work in a cinema or in real life, if you put it on paper, it just falls really flat. True, and as someone once told me, drama is easy, comedy is hard. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree with that. So, any ideas for your next story or updates for anything? Uh, it's hard to say. I know that um, I have a very, very short Fleetwood story for this collab fit called The Album. Uh, by Paragine Cage. I hope I pronounced that correctly. If you're listening to this interview and I put your name, I am so, so sorry. Um, but what it is, is just he asks um, writers to volunteer to write short, very short, um, 1,000, 2,000 word snippets of various poems' lives. So I chose Fleet Food. And I have it ready. I just need to give a bit of editing and send it to him for the post. Oh, awesome. So this is a... Uh, global collab then? Yeah, that's on FIM Fake uh, under uh, one big thing. It's just simply titled The Album. Um, and it's just a collection of different characters, very short chapters, 1,000 to 3,000 words, all of that pony's life written by um, various one artists. author. Oh. So there's about, I think, at least 30 or 40 chapters. Oh, okay, and, so basically it's kind of a compilation of art... Uh, writers working together to create one fic then? Not really one fic. Like, the chapters don't link at all. It's sort of like just separate chapters of like, if you were to take a very average day of, let's say, Twilight Sparkle, what would you see her do? What what would she do? And, uh, yeah, that's what one chapter consists of. Just an average day in a poem, nothing special, just like the one in our minds, um, true to the MLP theme. So basically, a slice of life episode. So yeah. that fiction, that what do you call it, the album, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the album, what genres is it looking for? Is it slice of life, 
or all the stories are slice of life or um, each I think pers- all the stories should be slice of life there should be um, no action unless I think the code calls for it but um, most of the stuff would be very basic I wouldn't say boring but very relatable actions like if I spark, like Pinkie Pie just baking treats and stuff to the customers or something like that Oh, and then knowing Pinky, she'll probably put in an uh, MGS team somewhere. <laughs> yeah, something like that. That's Pinky. Oh, Pinky. You're so cray cray. Pinky. I love Pinky. Pinky Pie. Pinky Pie. Okay. So, Dan, any questions for Kelvin here? So, Kelvin, please do explain who is Normandy Jaden. I'm very curious. Um, if you played the game Heavy Rain on the PS3, there's a guy called Norman Jaden. I just added the words D at the end because, you know, I'm imaginative like that. And I came up with the name Norman Jaden. And because I was too lazy and too lazy to think of my butt to think of anything else, I just stopped with it. And, well, I, did, I don't play Mass Effect, so I didn't know Normandy was the name of the main ship. So every single time I say Normandy Jaden, I would get people asking me, do you play Mass Effect out there? <laughs> No, no, I don't. I play heavy rain. What's that? You know what? Never mind. This conversation is over. I'm out. Just the weather right now. <laughs> oh, God. No. <laughs> See, we- when you say uh, heavy rain, one thing pops into mind. Press X for Jason. <laughs> Jason! Jason! <laughs> oh, God. Uh, if, if you is not the how he called Jason, even though that's pretty funny. Mm. I, I imagine the voice actor in his studio just in front of the mic and the voice actor is like I need you to talk with Jason louder the voice actor is like oh okay just Jason no actually uh, the, the, there's a playthrough i seen somebody playing the game and I think the voice actor that did um, the father who is his name I forgot father huh? yeah the father for the oh, kid Mr. Uh, Jaden no Ethan no Mars. yeah I, I think Ethan he only yeah. recorded three lines of Jason <laughs> So you got Jason, Jason, Jason. Jason. Oh god, three lines. That's it. That's, it. That's, that's all you need. If you want to find, paid a few hundred thousand dollars. And if you want to see a funny playthrough, go watch two best friend plays oh, uh, Heavy friend. Rain. Yeah, that that is very funny. Uh. Oh, two best friends. You're so cray cray. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Kelvin, mm-hmm. where are you from? I'm from Singapore. Okay, just clear up. I knew that. I'm just trying to help the guests. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot to mention that. I, I, I forgot yeah, I to mention gonna, that. Um, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Norman. No, I, I forgot to mention that Norman D here is my neighbor. <laughs> ah, yes. Why do I... Call? Wise, I, I Have you two it. met by any chance? Yeah, we, we've yeah. met in Singapore when Black Griffin came down. Oh, okay, I see. And why am I addressing you as Norman D? God dang it. Just me as Norman D, then pulling your show as Norman D. I, I, I don't really mind. Uh, oh god, no. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to stick with Kelvin because Kelvin sounds oh, nicer or okay. Or oh, I just really don't know. Now. I just don't know. Oh, I, I feel like I, I feel like Rainbow Dash going to crawl into a corner because of insecurity right now. But anyway, Let's put my let's put my insecurity on the spotlight because I've been thinking about writing something like I joined film fiction and haven't write anything yet so I I've been thinking about writing something and my idea I've put it out there for a while now is to write a a slice of life kind of comedy slash teen adventures not really adventure but just teen story about how Rainbow Dash discovered that uh, things are not as it seems. Uh, the basis is around somehow somebody out there was making a Daring Do movie. And the one of the scenes was in the Every Fury Forest. And the actress that playing Daring Do is coming. And Rainbow Dash is excited to look at uh, or to meet the actress playing wow. Daring Do. Because she, uh, in her mind, that she thought that, oh, this this. Um, pony that's playing Daring Do she must be awesome yet in reality she's very shy and timid ah okay can't <laughs> bring out the stuck pony yeah bring out the dancing lobsters <laughs> um, but yeah that's that's a pretty good idea um, if you want to roll with it then just roll with it um, if you're scared that you won't write a good story just don't worry don't worry about it because um, that's 
that's uh, that's something I think all artists have to deal with. <laughs> but seriously, that, that that idea is pretty good. If if you have like a set few chapters in mind, or it's just one chapter, I I think you should go with it. Any tips like how uh, any beginner's mistake to avoid? Like uh, yeah, any, any uh, tips? Learn learn about um, attribution of speech. Just you, that's one of the most important things to get down. It's um, it's like. For example, if I say the speech, I like to party, the pink pony said, and the I like to party is in the quotation marks. Um, you have to put a comma instead of the full stop um, after the word party. So it's I like to party, comma, the pink pony said. Because um, there's like a whole few rules about attribution of speech, and it's something small, but um, if people read and see that you know proper attribution of speech, it can really make a big difference on when, on what they think of your writing. Just don't piss off the grammar Nazis. <laughs> yeah, screw the grammar Nazis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no, one, no one can be per... Uh, grammar Nazis are good if you're reading the story, but if they're going to pick apart every grammar mistake, I mean... That's yeah, what they do! Yeah, I mean, okay, fine, I make some mistakes, but... And for some grammar Nazis that don't pursue it, fine, they just tell me my mistake, that's great. Thank you for telling me my mistake, thank you for pointing it out. But for, pe- but for those grammar Nazis who harbor on the mistake and think that just because of one or two grammar mistakes, the writer's bad or something, yeah, um, I, I, don't, I don't like those people. <laughs> true, true. They're, they're, it's, it's, it's taking... Not necessarily. Yeah. I think this. You can um, run it by like you know anyone. You can run it by me if you want before you put it up. Then they can help you weed out all stuff. True. I think what Kelvin is trying to say here, um, or trying to point out is there's this one Mendo Pony video where he was talking about how internet people think. You remember that one? Where how to uh, accept criticism or how to avoid trolls and stuff. And one of those comments like say, oh yeah, your y- your song is. Uh, I thought your song was awful, but this one was pretty good. Uh, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, if if someone doesn't give you constructive criticisms, uh, there's a really really fine line between criticisms and insults. You can take criticisms, but insults you should try to not accept. I mean, uh, if you're gonna post stuff on the internet, let's face it, insults, trolls are all gonna come, haters are gonna come, just cause you posted something on the internet. It's so easy to succumb and tell yourself that you're a bad artist or a bad writer or a bad musician or whatever just because one person says it. But you have to tell yourself that these guys aren't giving you constructive criticism. So their judgment might not be the best. True, true. And I also like to do this comparison thing. Okay, you're you're criticizing me. Okay, now let me see your work. If your work is not up to par like mine or we have two different styles or let's just say mine is better than yours I'm not going to take it I'm just going to throw it back into your face because you're not worth the time if your work is much better than mine and you're calling me out for this and then like okay I'll respect your opinion because clearly you are much better than me yeah. for me I understand that everyone has their opinion so if I see an insult on my I kind of just ignore it it does nothing for me. It does replying would do nothing for either of us. So just leave it be. He's true. not gonna pursue it. I'm not gonna pursue it. True. This true. comment is just gonna fade into the abyss of the internet, yeah. and no one gets hurt in the process. True. Or the dusty method of uh, doing stuff: comment with a single phrase and then ban. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But ban's a little harsh. I don't think you can ban like everyone fake this. Yeah, but either ban or block. So, uh, Kelvin, besides writing, what else do you do? Are you still uh, studying, by the way? Like, you know, oh, yeah, like yeah. University uh, or something? I'm studying in a polytechnic, which I guess, um, I'm not sure what Americans call it. I guess junior college. I, I, I don't know. I'm studying in polytechnic. University like, something? No. Uh, university is like um, after polytechnic, so it's something like of, college? Yeah, I guess. I, I guess college would be the best way to describe it. And okay. I'm in the course of video game um, uh, game entertainment technology which is just Ooh. how to develop video games wait 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 they're teaching that in school these days now yeah oh, uh, they, yeah, you can they take have a course that. in it yeah so yeah they have a course for like everything I, I actually can't even think of a single job like where they don't have the course through 
like I thought, so like maybe they even balloon have decoration. A... Go figure. Really, they have it? No, no, no. no they balloon don't. decoration? Yeah. No, no. Uh, I don't think so. Only, Only in, in the US. US. Oh. Not here. Oh. Well, they even have a course on that. Well, they have a course on how to be a Jedi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they have. So, they have a whole university dedicated to decoration in the US. Yeah. So, so screw it. Korea has <laughs> Korea University of Magic. Kelvin, you're doing video game design, so yep, any interesting development? No, video game development. So any interesting things or secrets you want to tell people that not that are not in the know in the industry? Um, I don't work in the industry yet, so I know as much as you guys know from IGN.com or something. Uh, uh, I, I I I just study like the art of making a video game, but as for video games itself. I just catch up with the news like every other person. I don't get secret information. I don't get um, secret confirmation. I have a few teachers that work in the video game industry or used to work in the video game industry, and they're really, really cool. But like, but since they don't work there anymore, they also don't have any, you know, inside information. So basically, I, mean, I hope they're not the type that you know come on and brag about it. Oh no, no, no! They were really humble about it. Because the one that I know that was in my high school just kept bragging that she, you know, I work for a video game. I developed this engine, this engine, this engine. Nobody cares, ma'am. Just teach us how to use the keyboard. <laughs> uh, no, my the the teachers I know they are all really humble. They they don't mention like they mention it once when when we meet them so that they know that so that we know that they have experience and they're not just you know basic um, teachers. So they mentioned it once. They say that you know I've worked on this game. I was a programmer on this game. I was a designer on this game. So you know I'm more than qualified to teach you this subject. Just you know to confirm that what they're saying is not made up PowerPoint slides on Google or something. <laughs> so yeah, but other than that, they don't really mention it unless you ask them. But they have a lot of really cool stories about video game development in the real industry and how really tough it is. And you gotta brace yourself for it. Uh, yeah, I can, none, none that I can think of at the moment, but uh, it'll come. Anything you got, Matt? Yep, yep, there's one. So, what? you recently joined the fandom in May, March? Um, uh, March of last year. Yeah, yeah. March of 2012. And yeah. you have been really prominent in the Twitterverse as a Twitter <laughs> brony. How, how did you start out? Like, any tips for... Uh, newcomers to the Twitterverse to handle themselves? <laughs> I don't know what to say. As in, for me, I just follow people that I thought were interesting, were nice, and I just started to reply a few of their tweets. I got into a conversation with them, you know, if you want to start a conversation with them, don't act like um, some fan in there, like a big girl. Just treat them like a normal person. That's one of the most important tips. Um, they're just a lot of guy. Talk to them like you would to any other guy or girl. And they're really nice. They're, they're really welcoming. And I think that's one of the great things about talking to bronies. They are really warm. Most of them are really warm. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> and the, um, the, the other thing is that uh, I noticed that you talk to a lot of uh, voice actors and actresses. And some of them respond to you. Like uh, a good example is Lee Tokar. Uh, Lee, uh, Lee, if I'm not wrong, Lee responds to most, if not all of his replies. So, uh, but Lee's a, I, uh, Lee's a really cool guy. He's, um, he's such a ambitious guy, and he's really, really, really amazing to just converse with. <laughs> he's so funny. I know. I get the feeling, and I feel that um, he is awesome in that uh, he's kind of oh, you you have that awesome friend and. He's that guy. Yeah. He's an awesome dude. It's like running through his blood kind of deal. Yeah. Awesome is part of my DNA. Exactly. So, um, here's, here's the thing. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you're part of Fendel, right? No. Not officially. I mean, there's a Fendel Skype call, like, where fans of Fendel can go on, talk to other people who are interested in Fendel. I am part of that, but... As for officially involved in fan build, <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, I'm just interested in the idea of fan build, and if I can get a writing, I wouldn't say job, but a writing role in any of the animations, I'd be more than happy to, or even pitch my own, um, pitch my own animation idea or something. I'm just interested in the idea. Uh, I'm not officially involved in fan build in any way. 
Ah, okay, because... You're a fan of fandom. Yeah, yeah. I'm, fan of, <laughs> I'm a fan of fandom. Wow, so meta. So meta. Because, so, fandom uh, within fandom, and a fan of that fandom. No, no, see, fan, fan build is something different, because fan build is... I need to get to know fan build, I don't really know what it's about. Um, basically, from what I understand, it's a compilation of... Uh, sorry, uh, it's a group of people where they work together to create um, a short film or a project or whatever um, it is. Yeah, it's sort of like, imagine this website where you can go to and you can either pitch an animation idea or you can join other people who are looking for animators, writers, voice actors, etc. Is, is it restricted not, to MLP? No. No, 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 no. Oh, it's okay. not at all related to MLP in any way. Um, it's sort of like an online animation studio where you can gather and start a project with a bunch of other people. And you can post your episodes online and then, um, you know, uh, if it's popular enough, then um, you can put it. Then it gives you a reason to put it on a on your resume if you're trying to get a job in the animation industry. At least that's what I'm, that, that's what uh, I'm sure FanBuild does, yeah. And if um, I understand right, yeah. sorry, uh, if I understand right, uh, if your uh, project is really good and does not infringe on any um, copyright it's laws, idea, yeah. Yeah, uh, they'll try to put it up on you network up. Yeah. TV. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's the lead Torcas plan, yeah. Uh, and you'll oh, get paid. You 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 even get paid. Uh yeah. Yeah, I'm graduating next year. I need a I need a job. So <laughs> uh, maybe maybe I don't. Fanville hasn't officially launched yet. It started a soft launch, but the hard launch is still on its way. Now, I mean, so, if you can earn money right now from doing fan projects, and uh, I wish <laughs> if yeah. I pay my if I pay attention in class and stop you know sleeping at two in the morning, I might be able to do something. Oh, on this <laughs> show, probably not. <laughs> So anyway, um, uh, I'm I'm done with my set of questions. What about you, Dan? Yeah, um, Calvin, do you happen to have an OC? Uh yes. His name is um, Spark Plug. Spark Plug. And, Spark uh, Plug. So yeah, sounds like a car uh, junkie. Kind of yeah, he's toy. sort of he's he, he's an inventor, sort of. Um, you got a picture? Uh yeah. If you go to my SIM fiction account, uh, Devscar. You, uh, my profile pic is um, Spock Lock. Uh, let, yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah, I, I, I see him now. He is a very... Is it orange or brown? Uh, brown. I just used like random color until I found one that wasn't absolutely repulsive. Like how Osaka Jam made his um, OC, I kind of did it the same way. I random until I found a color that wasn't absolutely repulsive. <laughs> uh, then I just change like a bit of the main color until I found something I like, change the style and all that until, hey, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, and the two pliers or spanas? Oh, yeah, those are the um, two monkey, two wrenches and as his two not in an explanation. Signifies his inventive personality oh. and his inventive talent. Wow, that's so cool. Uh, for me, I, I just created something Really simple. Oh, I wanted to have this character, an Earth Pony, really bland. And I'll just import the hair from my previous fandom. Okay, insert it there. And, hmm, colors. Um, I, I want to look normal. No, nothing so fancy with any colors. Just brown. Brown and brown. Yay. Oh, simple. you're the polar opposite of me. Uh, I went all out. I had to have, like, the greatest damn OC alive. Oh, uh, no. See, that's the mistake. Oh, that's mistake number one. There's no, there's no such thing as the greatest Nemo C alive, unless you're Lauren Faust. in my universe. No. So yeah, she's the princess of my universe in that sense. Oh, if you say so, Lauren Faust has the best OC, man, seriously. Oh uh, yeah, I mean in the world, yeah. Pill OC is the best. That's not OC, that's freaking canon. Yeah, technically OC. Uh, Hasbro did not acknowledge her existence, so it's an OC. So that was Kelvin, Devska. And thank you for answering our questions, uh, Kelvin. It, it was fun talking to you about um, video games, stories, Twitter. What else did we touch? Life. <laughs> life. What's the meaning of life? I don't know. Bacon. 42. Bacon of life. 42. 42 is the meaning of life. Let's ask Google. <laughs> oh, that's not. So anyway, thank you once again, uh, no Kelvin, for answering our questions. I, I hope you're not too annoying. No, no, no. 
if not, you're not annoying at all. It was um, really fun. Okay, so let's try something uh, something new. Um, I asked on Facebook about what should we talk about as topic time, and I got a few answers. And here's something interesting that I think that might interest you guys. A user called, give me a second, let me copy pasta because I am very bad at pronouncing names. Could somebody help me with this name? This in Skype. Kuzairi, I think. Kuzairi. Oh, oh wait, I, wait, I know that person, right? Wait, I'm I, I think I asked on, I asked on ABH. So, well, it, it looks Malay, so just pronounce it as you will yeah. the Malay name. I got no idea. So, Kuzairi. So, he Sorry. asked, how MLP would affect Japan and such, or how Japan would affect MLP? So, I think this is a rather interesting question with the whole Japanese release. Um, sorry, with the whole Japanese dub being aired and stuff. And from what I noticed... Ponies in Japan and how they're handling it, it's pretty interesting. It's good. I, I, I know that you don't watch it that much, hey, Kelvin, because of uh, the... Yeah, it's, I, I've <coughs> never been much of a fan for um, anime or Japanese pop, Korean pop. Uh, it's just it's not my kind of animation. <laughs> that's, that's just about it. It's just my personal opinion. I know a lot of people love it. I totally respect that. I can see why. Okay. But really from cute, really awesome. well, it, it is a dub, not a remake. So uh, I think we all seen the episode, but in yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, let, let let me just describe the whole scenario of the whole show or the well, based on the Japanese dub. Um, the intro is one minute long, and so is the outro. And some of the scenes in the middle got cut. Yeah, I noticed that. Oh, really? Yeah, they, they cut. Um, if you know, For if, the outro and the intro? I think so. That and it could be because of ad time in Japan are much longer or much shorter. Ah, yes, Japanese. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But one thing that I noticed is that there's a clock on the screen. And oh. it shows you what time it is. That's... Now, I tell you, if I had this on Disney Channel or Cartoon Network when I was seven or eight years old, I would be a lot smarter than I am today. <laughs> Telling the time. I don't know. That's standard Japanese um, uh, TV. They, they show clocks at the side to tell the time. I, I, I'm not sure how to describe it. I, I'm not pure, I, I, I'm, I'm not into the Japanese scene that much. But anyway, there's a few scenes that cut. Uh, for example, is the scene when Twilight arrives in Ponyville. And when she got off the chariot, she said thank you to the guard. But in the Japanese dub, they cut it off. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Y'all need cheese. <laughs> Y'all need cheese. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, this show's going to hell. Oh, uh, yeah. But anyway. but basically, let's just rewind a little bit and go to the intro. Now, dear Princess Celestia, I learned one thing from this. Japanese anime intros have nothing to do with the show. Actually, they could have... Mirai Start translates to a love song. I'm like, what? Mirai Start. Uh, I don't know. That's the name of the theme song. And it's like, okay, it's cute. It's got that high, high, high in it. And it's like, okay, fine. It's nice. It's cute. Then, wait, what does this song mean? And it's like, I'm going to meet you today and something like that. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. Fine, fine, fine. This is not a love story. This is not Johnny Bravo Pony Edition. Uh, Why are they playing a love song? I think you're interpreting it the wrong way. Because, do remember, Japanese have more than... One word could mean a lot of things. I read the translation, so I guess, you know, yeah. one person's whole translation song being translated and having that kind of context could can't be, really be wrong. Could be that person's. Uh, I don't understand Japanese. Yeah, me too. But um, for the song, uh, interestingly enough, it's sung by the Japanese dub Pinkie Pie, Mimori Suzuko. Ooh. Yeah, and funny enough, she voices a lot of other characters in some other animes that people might or might not watch, like. Uh, uh, Milky Holmes, Detective Something, I don't remember, and also oh, Cut Vanguard. Yeah. And then, you know, thanks to all the Valentine's Day crap, I know what Aishituru sounds like, and I can <sighs> hear it in that song, so... Basically, yeah, I think they're going in that direction, because I don't think Aishituru means something else in Pony. Yeah, but say, I love something. I don't know. You, you know, sometimes... Some people got some other things to say. I don't know. It's just a song. Don't take it too seriously. No, no, it's not that. It's just that I look at it and I'm like, why? I thought, you know, because the Italian version has that nice rock song, you know, Go and Fly, My Little Pony. <laughs> and uh, the rest all have nice translations and suddenly Japan comes in. Oh, What's you going on? No, you see, the, the, the other thing is, um, you have to understand about Japan is 
when they create an intro opening for any show, anime, or anything like that, they're trying to sell you stuff in general because... What do you mean by that? Okay. Certain artists in Japan like to insert their song into an anime, especially for Naruto, Bleach, Cardfight Vanguard, even Pokemon, or even oh. other other animes out there. And um, especially for Naruto, when they use a theme song, sometimes in Naruto, it doesn't relate anything at all with the whole show. It's just a song to be embedded there. It's just a song. And oh, all right. they're selling the song. Do you know the principle of, if I hear this 52 times, I'm going to like it. Oh, yeah. You know, same thing happens with a lot of viral music. Yeah. So it's basically, they're trying to do that. Like, insert song here in uh, the intro for an anime and make it play every week. Oh, and all right. people or... Fans of the show will automatically purchase the song or album. Usually in Japan, what they do is they release singles with uh, the song that you want, another song that's not related to, at all with the anime that you're watching, and the uh, instrumental for both songs. Ooh, sneaky, sneaky. And it's just a mini disc. It's not even a full fledged disc. Mini disc? They still use that stuff? Uh, if, if you think about it, just for four songs. Okay. Yeah. So that's how Japan usually does their, well, sell their products. And with toys in Japan, like, um, how do I want to explain this? Yeah, for ponies in Japan, um, what they try to do is insert the song in the beginning. Uh, that's Mimori's album or single, her first single, she inserted there. And in the end, there's this kind of Aki, I'm um, sorry, um... The credit song is different, right? Yeah, it's AK-42's clone something, I don't know, HK. as a clone? Dang. Oh, I, I, I got no idea. It, it's a it's a manufactured Japanese pop band thing, like what the Koreans are doing now, the Japanese are copying. So, but basically what they do is, they insert an end song there and hope that somebody... It's just, just, it's just copy what I said from the beginning and put it in the back. I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. Um, that's how Japan um, sells their swags. And All right. Also, the other thing is, the company that's dubbing the show is Bushiroad. Yep. And Bushiroad here is another interesting uh, group. Yeah, they dropped in their little blurb right after the start. That's standard because they're trying to tell the audience that this show is sponsored by... Uh, if... Uh, Company name is I mean, you Sid. You see Hasbro and DHX doing that. Why in Japan? Is it common to find this in anime? It's common because um, it says who sponsored the show. If a show gets mentioned, or no, if a company gets mentioned, uh, or top billing, as they say, they spend a lot of money. And in this case, Bushiro spent a lot of cash to bring in Pony and dub it. Okay. I think it's paying off. It's going to pay off anyway. I don't know. I, I've heard some Japanese Pony fans that watch the dub series talk about it and they say, why did this scene got cut? Why did that scene got cut? I've seen some of my friends who watch the show in J- Japanese. They're like, the voices, This I don't know how they arrive at this conclusion, but they say, the voices of the ponies in Japanese kind of suit the ponies better than the English scenes. I don't know. Why. I kind of not agree. <laughs> Now, some of them don't watch the English that much, but they say it looks almost like organic in a sense that the pony's voice matches the, the Japanese voice. I mean, we are so, so accustomed to the English. No, I mean, I, I kind of, I, I, I see what your friend's trying to say, I, and I agree to a point, because Pinkie Pie sounds really good, but Andrew Littman did better. Fluttershy's voice is really shy, and it's up to par. Twilight Sparkle is really awesome also. Rainbow Dash... It's awesome. Rarity, for me, they dropped the ball because Rarity is, like, she has that um, frou-frou-ness. I won't say frou-frou. Um, help me here, guys, because her tone in her voice, what would you call it? Formal. Formal. Stuck up. Yeah. All, all those kind of things that you would think of um, her. <laughs> or, I am not whining. Yeah. That, that kind of tone. And the Japanese, they didn't do that. 
Yeah. Me, I think they, they want it to be a light-hearted show, you know, not too many serious ponies in it. I would like to hear, you know, a bit more Princess Celestia. I don't think I've heard her voice just yet. I haven't watched the second part of yeah, the first do, do, episode. Do watch the second part. And Celestia's voice in Japanese also works. And uh, I think Osaka Jack would appreciate this because Applejack didn't use any Kansai accent for her speech. So that's awesome. Uh, what do you mean Kansai accent? Accent. In most animes or Japanese shows, uh, to represent somebody from the South, or in their case, um, hillbilly, something like that, they go for Kansai accent. It's like somebody saying, um, how do I, I, I don't know how to speak Japanese, but this going so, um, something, something, yeah. I, oh, okay. But I could hear they were trying to aim for very Japanese-ish, not I don't Japanese. Trying to aim for Southern, but was speaking Japanese like, yeah, Like, huh? Wait, what? But that's, I'm not used to that. But that's technically f- formal. That's, that's technically um, better than what they're trying to uh, trying to do. Because okay. in I'm some... I'm not very sure what they are trying to do, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I, I mean... It's because a... as far as I'm concerned, you can't take South people seriously. <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> But moving on, there's there's a few scenes in part two. Do you guys remember the scene where Pinkie Pie found the elements of harmony? I haven't watched part two. Oh come on, you don't, you haven't watched part two at all. Not the Japanese one. Yeah, you remember the scene where she found the uh, elements of harmony? Uh, the, in the English one, yeah, of course. Yeah, the book, right? Yeah, and found it, I found it. And it then was under me. they cut that part out. Oh, oh. I kind of understand why they cut it out because why so? the joke didn't work. Okay. Because how would a Japanese say that it was under E while yeah, yeah. so true, true. very true yeah so totally agree. some jokes they have to cut it out and this this is gonna be really interesting when they come You're to Asian you read you should know all this. <laughs> I, I don't know Japanese. No, I'm saying that could be a joke. You know, it's a book, it's a library. You're Asian. You spend your whole day reading. So, but anyway, I, I, this is going to be an interesting thing. When they come to the last roundup, are they going to cut Derpy out? Or are they just going to leave it in? I think I they might just leave it in. Because Derpy, did, Derpy didn't really tell a joke. Yeah, but... I, it, no, I think they cut it out. Because without the fan following... I think, not that Derpy can exist by herself, but Derpy by <laughs> herself... Um, in the Japanese way, I'm not sure if they know what's wrong with Derpy, because if they're just taking the original episodes and just, you know, dubbing over them, I think they might just leave Derpy in. But if they know of the controversy that Derpy is causing, um, they might just take it out, because, you know, the voices are very touchy and all that. Yeah. You don't oh, want yes. something wrong. But they could just leave it in and use the remastered version from iTunes. No, yeah, but, they, could. they could. No, but they need their own. But that doesn't change anything. The only change in the remastered version was the lines that Rainbow Dash said to Derby. And the and eyes. Even, and even then, they still have to have a Japanese Derby voice. So, I'm thinking that if they don't mind having a Japanese Derby voice, go, you know, go nuts. But, um, if, you know, they know what's happening, Hasbro is, you know, a bit cautious about ja- having a Japanese Derby voice, because uh, the American Derby got such um, flame, then they might just cut it out. But I think the Japanese it, people know how to behave themselves a little more, so maybe. Uh, I, I think for I, this, com- I, I think for the whole situation right now is, a they could just leave it b as what we have seen in you know, the original stream or the original debut of Derpy, or they could just use the iTunes version where Derpy eyes was corrected and her eyes, um, sorry, her eyes were corrected and her voice changed. But since yeah. this is a dub. Um, I think they're going to pay close attention to her voice and the eyes are just going to be normal. Yeah, true. Um, I I think even, you know, that little derpy, uh, for the lack of a better word, uh, slow character, in it's quite common in anime shows, isn't it? Yeah. That one little uh, ditzy, airheaded person. Yeah, Yeah. ditzy, airheaded, clumsy fella. I think it's more common there, so it's probably more socially accepted. It might just happen in Japan because uh, they know how to behave themselves. I I don't know. It, now it's all speculation, but honestly, thinking yes. like they could just use the um, remastered version and just go with their voice, but <coughs> it's a long way to go. They're just in what episode? Coming to episode three soon, so we'll we'll see, we'll see. And I'll take a look and compare um, the original footage to what they have because I want to see what they cut out. 
because interestingly enough the Japanese dub cut out the Pinkie Pie joke that that was funny it was on the E it was on the E it was on the E no, and, and the thing is I was watching it and I'm like why do, okay something Japanese Japanese elemental harmony or like don't you have Japanese for element and harmony you see sometimes they don't want to use their own words because of names like, because it's a key item, like yeah. um, it's a it's a key item, so they don't wanna. Um, I mean, I understand for a name like Pinkie Pie or Twilight Sparkle, maybe because yeah, you tend to romanize. See, but, but elements of harmony is such is, is such a you know, and I think even in the Spanish dub, it goes to their no, own language. Uh, you, you see, there's there's a few things about uh, other people. Like, how do I put this? Like what Kelvin was saying, uh, it's a key item, it's a key thing, or. Help me out here, Kevin. Is a key item? Which well, is... it, 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 it's, a, it's a very important item in the universe. So using using the the literal words of elements of harmony gives it that sense of importance that you know if you just translate it straight to Japanese, you know you um, they want to make it sound more important, and I think they kind of also want to um, uh, how do I put this. Uh, make sure that um, the people the the people watching can how do I put this like identify I with the item they can identify as soon as it says elements of harmony like those two words are one of the key items in um, MLP that's referenced a lot so if they so by using the English words it makes it instantly relatable and when and when that word comes out I think that they they will easily be a, yeah that's a key item because you know it's not it, Typical Japanese fashion. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. as far as I know, it's like when English is substituted in another language, it's sometimes because you're cursing at someone like, you know, Russell Peters made that joke about how Hindi movies tend to go, Let me, let me, let me, idiot. And you know, English tends to be that word that they, you, they, 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 just call, they just look for a word to insult other people and they can't find a word in their own language so they use a common curse word that's always found in English. Cause but then, here's the thing, uh, you're, you're, you're turning from uh, Indian to English. Now it's I mean, even English. here, we, we, no, I, mean, I don't know see, about you guys, but we curse each other in Cantonese all day long. No, but so. see, the thing is, we, the conversation here is now is English to Japanese. So you're, what you're trying to say here or what you're trying to argue here is kind of invalid why the Japanese don't use their own words. No, I'm not trying to argue it. I'm just wondering why. I'm still, I'm still trying to understand the whole concept of bringing in and not translating. It's like, if you don't translate it, suddenly it's English. It's like, I don't understand why it has to be done that way because it's not like Japanese all have watched the English one before. and no, they know uh, I kind of agree with what Kelvin just said because like when when somebody, when a character says a limit of harmony, um, the the viewers or the Japanese audience will click. Oh, that's an important item because they say it in English. They didn't translate it, so I mean, they must didn't be... do it in the English version. So it's still an important item. You know, in, in the whole deal of uh, My Little Pony, it's not like they are the then they suddenly come up with a Latin word for it. No, it's not see, like they did no, that in the English no, one. No, no, you, you're getting it all confused because what you're trying to say here is why does the Japanese show need? More emphasis, in particular, in that sense. No, because some. Uh, <laughs> yes, if you, if you, um, in animes that uh, we won't know why, but that's kind of how it goes. Like if, um, if you see Dragon Ball Z when they shout Spirit Bomb, they don't shout Japanese words for Spirit Bomb. They don't go Spirit Bomb. At least that's why. I, at least oh, that's so why it happens in almost all animes. It's almost, when something like almost. a superpower, like you're shouting out the move and it has the English click, like it wouldn't sound as good in Japanese. So that's the oh, English okay. click. Yeah. It's all like yeah. it's all like hyper superpower laser beam that is like uh there's this is really cool English name like um Planet Destroyer or Planet Cracker or something. You try to get to Japanese game, imagine how weird. Or maybe there's something clashing with it, but when you just go up Planet Cracker it's, it has the impact that um is missing if you translate it in Japanese. True, true. And th- there's a few things also that you want to make it sound cool because let's just say a fighting game. Let's put example the King of Fighters. Um, one of the characters called Terry Bogard, one of his power is Power Geyser. And they don't translate it to Japanese. Like, they just say Power Geyser. And that's about it. Because if you translate to into Japanese, it will sound all weird. But then we'll 
think about it and we'll try and yeah it's somehow the cool factor how how cool does it sound and there is also a catch 22 when you um take it take something japanese and turn it into english because when you say kamehameha i think the literal translation is uh turtle beam turtle beam or something like that uh, it's it's something really 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 long or something yeah it's like uh, it's um the what's it called the um, total devastation wave. Yeah, so it's like... Okay, so can you imagine like a guy just going, you're total devastation wave. That doesn't sound cool. Well, it sounds, like, it sounds like some sort of kung fu technique. You've seen a B-rated kung fu movie. Well, technically, I don't share your enthusiasm because, I mean, the only thing that I got out of it was more like after watching Halfway, okay, from that one line, I can start to uh, recall what the heck they're talking about. Yeah, yeah see, see, that's what they want. But I'm not Japanese. Yeah, I'm but no, see, Japanese. that's what they want. See, if you can recall what they're trying to say, or you can click on what they're trying to say, because... I mean, I'm trying to click back from the English episode, yeah, but, I'm thinking in English. I don't know how to think in Japanese. Yeah, but the thing is, what they're trying to... Well, the message they're trying to say is, if you hear a phrase, no matter what language you hear it, or if it's a prominent phrase, you automatically click, because the elements of harmony is an important item in that world. It wasn't really the elements of harmony that clicked. It was more of the names of the ponies. Where I, oh, okay, they're talking about yeah. Pinky. But oh, no, they're talking really. about Luna. They're talking about this. They're talking about yeah. that. Oh, okay. yeah, that's the same concept. Because yeah. um, you're you're clicking with stuff that is out of context. Like suddenly, you know, there is a Japanese name for like Pinkie Pie. It could have been very Twilight Sparkle. But the reason that they said it to English, it's so that you instantly relate that this is something key. This is something that is important to the show that is recurring. So if if you put it all in Japanese, then nothing really stands out. They make but that's in English. Everything is in English in the English show, and it doesn't happen there. No, see, the, the, you're, you're trying to argue two different states of... No, 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 no. I'm trying to understand why the Japanese no, see, people do this, because the English show doesn't do it. No, they, no because it started out as an English show. As in, if... How do I put this? If, okay, if a Japanese anime were to be translated to English, the words Kamehameha will still remain as Kamehameha in English. Because okay. it's the original version of the Japanese already solidified the word Kamehameha True. as right. the key phrase. Um, as the key phrase, the character was shout out when um when he I when he cast the spell, which allows the American audience to identify or even because it's already ch- it was originally changed from the Japanese version to the English. Yeah. But if you for the English version, now this is the opposite. Imagine that MLP is to um Amer- is to Japan what Dragon Ball Z is to America. It's the same thing. They're switching the words for elements of harmony in relating to Kamehameha. They have no reason to change it into a full Japanese word it's because. It's something signature. It's something relatable. It's something that you can identify with. Um, okay. So there's no way for you to change it. There's no need for you to change it. True, India, I agree. And then you seem to don't agree. No, I was just. It's not more of an agree or disagree thing. It's just I'm, I was confused to be honest. That's yeah. why now now so, I now I see things a little clearer. So, I'm not trying to argue a point or anything. Okay, so okay, here's a bad example of somebody doing it wrong. Um, you guys know the show Initial D, right? Nope. Yes. I, I know it, but I don't watch it. Yeah, but I only okay. know about the Taofu song. Taofu song? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so basically, you got the main character Fujiwara Takumi, and then yeah, yeah. you and then got the dude that drives the Corolla and delivers Taofu. Yeah, but and then like you got this character Ryosuke something. You want to know what they did in the English dub? What? They totally changed the name. Totally, like uh, Ryosuke, they turned to TK, RK, or whatever, and then like. Um, I don't remember what Takumi's name is because it changed to something strange. Let me try and see. Uh, m- maybe they did something because I'm trying to remember because I didn't like the English dub or the English translation of the whole show. Yeah, in the Jap- in, in the English dub, they changed uh, Fujiwara Takumi to Tak, T-A-K, Tak, that's all. And then th- there's a few things like R-Y, K-T. And no, it just don't work. It just don't work. I mean, it wouldn't make much difference to me because they're just names. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Now, think about ponies. If they change the name to Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. I said it wouldn't make much of a difference. Really? You won't, you won't, you, you won't gro- groan like, oh God, they changed my favorite character, uh, Pinkie Pie to... Um, 
Let's say you're a Jap. I mean, unless you translate pie into the food, then otherwise, no, there's not there's not much. Let's say you're a Japanese person who has been watching American, um, a Japanese dubs of American MLP. All of a sudden, it translates back, and all of a sudden, pinky pie is the just a flat Japanese word for pie. That's yeah. it. Oh. And that's that's kind of poor translation. I mean. We are over with the days of all your base that belong to us, so I suppose they'll do a better job. Yeah, but see... Yeah, but we'll have to talk. <laughs> yeah, see, that, that's yeah, one exactly. example. And also, okay, here's a um, here's going to be something local that our international people might not understand what I'm trying to say. But just imagine this. Like, Pinkie Pie, a uh, direct translation to Malay would call uh, Pai Merah Jambu. Just imagine that. That's her name. And then okay. each character will say, Pai Merah Jambu, Pai Merah Jambu... That, just imagine that, and then like that running through your head every time, every time you knowing her real name, but the Malay dub calls her that, and then that carries over to the younger generation who are watching it, and they call her Pai Merah Jambu, and like oh my god, or okay. even worse, or Awan Plangi, that's Rainbow Dash, no, uh, Dash Dash is Awan Pe- uh, Plangi Pechut, that's okay. the direct translation. Just imagine that. Bouncing in your head all the time. Oh my god, that's going to be so bad. And but it works for Chinese because when we talked see, to Draco a few episodes ago, I know. it's like it worked. But you he have to understand translation. The names are translated very well, and sure. some of them are actually literal translations yeah, because but, ponies don't take on names like like Little's Pet Shop. They don't have names like Zoe no. Trent or anything. No, but that is see, the, translate. The, the thing is, um, it's based on culture. Also, you were saying that Italian uses some kind of uh, phrase that they have. See, each culture or each. Um, country or each language have their own way of doing stuff. Um, the Japanese they tend to use English. They tend to borrow English words, and the Chinese oh. sometimes they don't have an English word or they don't see. They do actually. Yeah, I know, but most of the Chinese citizens don't understand a word, a word of English. So to use a word of English in a show that is meant for kids, it's some kind of disruptive. So they have to change the phrase and Chinese always tend to do their own thing. I see. Okay, now that makes it clear. Yeah. It is, it is, it is. But I think Calvin and I have been trying to say this from the start and... Uh, no, I kind of understood you all but it's just like the only, re- the only thing is that I was just trying to say I just didn't understand why and why that, you know, across other cultures because you're saying it made it sound important and I'm like why, does the Jap- why are the Japanese people like, for lack of a better word, dumb enough not to know what's important? Yeah, it's that click. It's that click. Like, when you say iPhone, iPad, or Apple, you automatically think um, like that Apple brand product. And you say Windows 7, you automatically think sucks. So Windows 8 it, sucks. <laughs> Windows 8? Windows 8. Sucks? Windows 7 is good. Yeah, sorry. Did I say 7 or 8? Yeah, you said 7. Oh, sorry. My bad. Uh, Windows 8, yeah. When you say Windows, Windows 8... Windows 8 only okay. sucks if you don't know how to use it. Yeah. Yeah, you need a touch screen. That's going to another topic. But see, it's those key words, those key phrases. And then when you say Android, automatically Samsung. Uh, so for some no. people, maybe uh, majority Samsung. But some people say Sony, some people say HTC. Android is Google, damn it. Oh, you and I know, but most of the rest of the world, it's Samsung. That's how that's how the world thinks. But see, those key phrases. And when you say, Aremun to Harmony. Ultimately, Elements of Harmony. That's a key phrase. That's a book that Twilight has that will not be referred until Season 2, Episode 1. No, uh, right. they referred it into one of the episodes. Right? Oh. I thought they didn't refer it until Season 2 because um, they... No, only... uh, I don't... I, I haven't watched, like... I haven't watched Season 1 episodes for, like, so long. <laughs> Same <laughs> here, so man. Long. Been, I, I have to go rewatch it. I, I just have to. <laughs> Although, although there are some episodes that I know I'm going to skip. Like, I cannot watch The Mysterious Maduel again. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to, like, spread back. That's not how Rainbow would act. That's not how Rainbow would act. Rainbow <laughs> is not that terrible. <laughs> oh, there, okay. there, there goes another computer. Oh, another God. Computer. <laughs> Out the window. I'm finish watching that episode. Screw, screw that. But I, I... I kind of... I'm okay with the episode because of the song. I... Wait, Mysterious Maduro? Sorry, not the song, song, but not not the song, but the background music. Because if you listen, it reminded you so much of Batman the animated series. <laughs> but um I I really didn't like the episode because you know what? 
I, okay, this is my personal speculation, and I know that I'm probably wrong. But what I think happened was that this new writer came, and uh, she wanted to write something. So I'm uh, Mary Rather Williams, by the way. Um, yeah. I, I I did enjoy some of her episodes. Uh, Mary Well just wasn't one of my favorites. Although I know that some people actually like the episode, true, and I'm fine with that. That's their opinion. True, so what true. I think happened was that they just gave her overviews of each character. So they, they, they actually just told her, you know, Rainbow is this competitive, slightly arrogant, yet compassionate person. So she tried to show that, but I think she accidentally might have showed too much of the arrogant persona. Just, if you describe Rainbow Dash, you describe her as competitive and a bit <laughs> arrogant. True, but and I, I, I... And I think that's what happened. But, you know, that's just a theory. Probably wrong, though. No, I, I don't disagree because um, I remember, um, you know this one YouTube guy called Data Brony? Uh, ah, yeah, sorry, Digibrony, yeah. yeah. He did a really good analysis of the few episodes that, um, well... Mary Yeah, Mary Mer- Mer- did, like, the Mysterious Mary Duel is one of them. Okay. And he said that Rainbow Dash is one of the only characters that had a noticeable character development cycle. Because in season one, she was confident, yet she was scared of um, failing and had stage fright in Sonic Rainbow. And moving on to season two, she was overconfident. She was ah. too overconfident. And if you notice how the cycle went, like she saved that kid's life. Was it saving the kid's life at first? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, stopping the carriage, yeah. Yeah, and then like, um, it, you see, uh, it slowly increases her ego. It slowly like uh, put her ego way up high, over 9,000 kind of deal. Where she's like, I'm so awesome that nothing can, uh, nothing can hurt me. Um, her friends could have teach her a lesson uh, in a nicer way, but with Rainbow Dash, you need to up the ante, some kind, I, kind of deal. I didn't really like the episode because it was a lot of build up for a very dis- for a very predictable ending and disappointing uh, payoff. It yeah. was sort of. It was sort of, it's a tried and true written formula. Um, and I don't have a problem with that. MLP writers do um, very predictable stories, but they do it well. They do it, um, and they do it with a unique twist. This felt like you could take the premise of the episode and fit it with like almost every other cartoon that even has a slightly airy character, and it would just, it would turn out the same. It would, there wouldn't be much of a change. Which is just like, as, as, as a personal bug to me. So true, that's true. why I didn't really like that episode. And I felt that it overplayed Rainbow's character a bit too much. Yeah. I understand that you want to show that she's arrogant, but I don't think that Rainbow would be the type to take her arrogance into actually being angry that, um, how do I put this? She wouldn't take her arrogance that far. She wouldn't take her arrogance to almost demand for so much attention. Yeah. She is she is attention craving, but I think that was just overplay, just like a, a bit too much in my opinion. Yeah, I, I can agree. I, I, for what you're trying to say and what the try, the show is trying to do, yeah, I can I can understand both sides. And here's an interesting fact: moving on to season three, another Rainbow Dash episode is the Wonder Boy Academy. And in this episode, if you notice, Mary Weather Williams write it. And in this episode, Rainbow Dash is true and loyal and. She shows that um, I want to be great, but I don't want to o- out- overshine other people. Like, yeah. yeah, give them their time also. And the character, her partner, who was it? Um, who was that other Pegasus side where that was with her? Uh, lightning dust. Uh, yeah, lightning dust. Lightning yeah. dust. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, lightning, lightning dust. Is it lightning dust? Because I'm a bit derpy. Yeah, 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 lightning dust. Yeah. Okay. With and with lightning dust. They, they say a few, like, uh, what people have been saying, like, Lightning Dash is to Rainbow Dash in Season 1. Ah. Uh. Yeah, and, like, Rainbow Dash is um, matured in her attitude. She knows how to control herself. She knows... Yeah, I, I, I like the Wonder Woman Academy episode. I thought it was a very good episode to show the contrast between how much Rainbow character has grown and how Rainbow is, a, like, she has learned from the lesson that she's written to the princess. And how I think it was just a big play over 
Rainbow's previous personality versus Rainbow's current personality that she does in fact learn and nurture and evolve, grow better with the friendship lessons she's learned with the main six. Yeah, true indeed. It's, it, it's a very good juxtaposition of um, old Rainbow Dash versus um, how Rainbow Dash is really like or what people would call the new Rainbow Dash. Yeah, and see, that's, that's the thing I like about ponies because... Um, they tend to keep with continuity. That that yeah, is what yeah, I enjoy. So, hey. um, I truth be told, I, I I'm not gonna insult Fluttershy fans here, but Fluttershy seems to have the least development, in my opinion. Yeah, true. I, her, I, I, her personality, she got braver, but that's one aspect that Fluttershy improved on, and I'm not sure what else she. I mean. I, ha- I actually haven't seen that much of improvement in her character other than that she's braver. After the Dragon Shy, she definitely appeared a lot more steadfast and willing to most of the time stand up for herself. True. I mean, um, being the yeah. Fluttershy fan here, uh, I-, I see some scenes where she she evolves, yet let's, say, let's just say that Fluttershy is really shy and she kind of hard to... Uh, she's she's a slow bloomer in that sense of development. Uh-huh. There's a few scenes where you can see that she really stands out, like um, putting your no putting your hoof, uh, putting your hoof down. down. That's one. Uh-huh. And yeah. when she's um, confident and um, when, sorry, when she when, where uh-huh. she's confident and assertive. But a few episodes later on, Dragon Quest, she is scared out of her mind. <laughs> Yeah, she. But that's a sort of a phobia that she can't really get over unless her friends are in danger. That much, I think, they relates to a characterization and personality of yeah. having a phobia of big and scary things. Yeah, true. So that's nothing that. And much also, it's generic nature to get over your fears when you really need to. It's like that hidden reserve strength in your body that can come out suddenly when you true. need to save someone. Yeah, but the thing is, like, um, Fluttershy stare down a dragon. So yeah. And moving yeah, on to the out of, um, in season in one, in the, yeah. I mean, if you love someone enough, then you know. If you, I mean, honestly, if I, I don't know, you see somebody you like, you know, falling off a bridge or something, you suddenly become you suddenly become Batman, you know. Yeah, and moving on, uh, Hurricane felt shy, still back to shy again and overcome her fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's, it's like you know, it's also peer pressure in an episode. It's like I don't know how it's putting it. It's like pull your weight, but also. I kind of got the the kind the, the, the effect that it's time to succumb to peer pressure. Everybody's pushing in the same direction. Don't you dare turn around. Yeah, it's true. I, I guess so. But overall, with the whole episode and Fluttershy's evolution, character evolution, I have to agree with Calvin. There's not much that's noticeable. Uh, even if it's noticeable, it's really deep where you need to analyze it. Yeah, I mean, it's a kid's show. They don't need to develop characters. Not like, you know, Walking Dead or something. No, I do not agree. Uh, if you talk about season one MLP, where nobody really gives a dang, yeah, this, no, everybody really gives a dang about it. Like I'm saying, it, it's not necessary. It still works out. And the characters, we like them because of what they are. We don't really want to see them change. I mean, in a sense, we can't avoid it, but we don't want to see them oh, change. I we want love to them for who they are. I want to see them change. Unless you don't I don't like them, and you want them to change into something you like. So no, I I want see. Here's where we don't agree because I want to see my favorite character evolve. I want to see her change. I I want to see her evolve grow. beyond. Yeah, grow. I want to see her be less shy and timid, but still keep keep her cuteness, like her shy nature, still intact. Like. Maybe be... I mean, they already showed us what the effect of it when, you know, it it kind of goes overboard, like in the case of when Iron Will talked her out of her shyness. And, you know, they say it's, it's something that once you do that, it takes away the personality that makes you like her. I mean, if you don't like that she's shy, then maybe that's a different story. No, but, but... That, that is turning it to a 180 because, like, okay, yo, we don't like Fluttershy because she's shy. Okay, we'll put her, we put the meter to 180 and make her less shy and more assertive, like... That is doing it wrong. And in that episode, they're just trying to tell you that there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. And what Fluttershy did was the wrong way. Okay, let me show you how the right way is near the end. Um, one of my favorites was um, uh, at the end of pulling a hook down, 
she shows that she has learned to be assertive without being a a, a big meanie. A big meanie, a big meanie who does not respect. Uh, but um, if you, what I didn't like was how it never goes back to that. She shows that she, you know, she learned to be assertive, but that never comes back. She the next time we see her, she's still me. She still doesn't know how to be assertive. So mm. I think the character development, the continuity was lost there, which one for, I think was a really missed opportunity. For which part now? We, we, um, what because, um, what episode was it again, you were think? Um, I'm talking about pulling her hose down. You know, at the end, she's talking about uh-huh. Angel. She gives a stare. She's like, okay, I'm, I know how to be assertive without being a big me. But when we next see her, um, I feel, uh, I'm not sure oh, I can drag it, quest or something. It's about time. It's about time when uh, yeah, she helped. Yeah, it's about time. And all of a sudden, she's not a, she's not putting her assertiveness down anymore. It's no. like she lost the continuity of putting her hose down, uh, which I think really breaks it. And yeah, I thought season, I thought season three will bring it back or something. But um, at the same time, season three itself, I think they overplayed Fluttershy's weakness way too much. You're, you're talking about the scene where she was helping Pinkie Pie carrying all those boxes, right? I'm talking about most of season three. I didn't. No, no sorry. Um, the, you're talking about the scene where it's about time where Pinkie Pie was asking Fluttershy to help her carry boxes, right? While she was carrying balloons or floating around balloons. Uh, I think the balloons she are carrying out. her. Yeah. yeah uh, but um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I actually don't remember like uh, that scene. I, I it's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that Fluttershy. Um, ending character putting a hole down shows that she has learned to be assertive but we never see that um, that flourish eye again the flourish eye that knows how to be assertive without being a mean when we go to when we jump to season 3 we see her being meek and a pushover again and I don't and I find that that's a very broken community uh, that's a very broken con- 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 community? community yeah uh, which episode were you saying because I don't really remember no, most of season 3 if not all Cause because there's a few things I, I remember about season 3 and her meekness and mostly uh, from what I notice is she's meek to her friends like she doesn't want to hurt their feelings kind of deal and most of the things that happen to her in season 3 are really important like the jousting event like she doesn't want to joust but Rainbow Dash forces her into and she says no yeah, but she's I... forced into that situation because like you have to because of Oh yeah, that much I understand. But at the same time, I think her her meekness, her her scared, how scared she was, it was a bit too overplayed. Um, in the sense that, um, I think Fluttershy should already start to show like at least a little brave, a little bravery. But, she did. Um, where? Keep coming and flutter on. Keep coming and flutter on. Yeah, true. Um, that wasn't much bravery, more of trust. No, she... Like, she trusted, she had faith that, um, what's his name? Discord is good inside. Um, was she actually scared of him? She was more of... It's kind of, because... She, see, the thing is, Discord is the... Um, Lord or Master of Chaos like he can do anything and like he's just been playing Fluttershy for a fool like by saying oh Fluttershy won't hurt me because Fluttershy is Fluttershy I I don't know they're just trying to make Fluttershy kind of uh, I like it when I see Fluttershy grow into someone who knows what's going on she's not just me she's not gullible she actually knows um, how it's going on. Um, that's what I liked about um, Keep Kind of Flutter On. Though, the episode itself, yeah. that's could, another story. Could, could have handled whole, it better. The whole concept and the characterization of Flash and Keep Kind of Flutter On was good. She knew that she was, that Discord was thinking that she was playing her. She knew that Discord thought that he was in control. She, but she still trusted Discord all the way to the end. But at the same time, uh, I find that her personality is not that stale. It's sort of jumping around when it doesn't really need to. True, true. But I, I think right now... Like, I, I feel like the writers themselves... Um, not to downplay the writers, the writers are absolutely amazing, but I feel that for Fluttershy, their coordination for her characterization is a bit off. Because some 
take her meekness way too far. Some take her bravery. Well, I wouldn't say far, but some take her as being braver and smarter than most ponies give her credit for, which is um, Kit Khan and Flora on. So I true. think that there's this wide disparity between Flora Shai's character, which makes her, which shows her in a light that it's a bit off. Like her characterization isn't solid ground, um, not yet anyway. Yeah. So I feel like the writers um, uh, should try and solidify Flora Shai's character as being brave at a specific time, yet being meek at a specific time, and showing those um, uh, those things, her personality with situations. But um, I find that uh, if you ask the writers to write how Flutter Shy will react to the same situation by give it to different writers, I have a feeling that they would each write Flutter Shy differently. Their Flutter Shy's reaction differently. Some would write her as riding away from the situation, some write her as standing up for the situation. True, true. You know, uh, solve I, this tooth-toed Flutter Shy. I, I, I agree, yeah. and I, I think the best way to deal with it right now is just to wait for season yeah, 4. Yeah, definitely. Or, I, I or, really hope season 4 shows that Flutter Shy's character has something solid and not something that's a little wobbly. You know, I have this theory that I want to happen in season 4, and this theory is Flutter Shy parents are Wonderbolts. Oh, <laughs> damn! Um, that, that I want to see because... I that was played with, with um, a few things. I mean, it's a great idea, but the, the, the touchy part would be the execution uh, but with relating to Rainbow's character. Uh, Rainbow's yeah. character would be the very key factor in the episode. I wouldn't say that would be a Flutter Shy episode, that would be a Rainbow Dash episode. Yeah, true. And you know what? Megan McCartney and Mary Allison work on it. <laughs> I think they have. I, nah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But um, we are told that we would see more of um, the May 6 parents and the interaction in season 4. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll just, see. just hope we wait. Just hope we wait. And also, um, there's the comic, the the micro comics with the main characters and stuff. Oh, I, like, oh, I can't get my hands on that. I can't read them online. I, I, I don't know what's going on. Okay, uh, a good tip for you is if you have a smart device, iPhone, Android, whatever it is, uh, install Comixology and you can buy it from there. Ah, I can't use a credit card. Oh. <laughs> Don't you get the books there? Huh? Don't you get the books in Singapore? Uh, yeah, but they kind of stopped importing it. Apparently, even though it was... Uh, they're only importing the IDW one. The micro series are very barren. <laughs> Oh, they, they are IDWs, but, oh, well. Yeah, I, I think they're, made, they're doing the uh, Chrysalis main six storyline. Um, I, I think the micro series will be cool, but then again, my school is starting soon, so uh, reading those comics wouldn't actually be the best time. Oh, Especially it's short. Especially read those comics and I start going on fan fiction ideas, that would be the worst. <laughs> oh, God, no. So, yeah. uh, okay, so talking about um, bad ideas, I think we've been running too long now. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we diverted way too far from... Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's still ponies. It's still ponies. I, I'll, I'll find a way. I'll edit, I'll edit it. I'll edit it. So okay. anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is... Shoutouts. My shoutout goes to you, Kelvin, Normandy, uh, whatever you want to call yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been derping this episode too much. So anyway, thanks for coming and having well, this interesting talk with us. Yeah, we we been meaning to talk to you for some time now, and um, getting to getting the chance to talk to you now. Wow, you're sure fascinating. Uh, I, I hope you did a good thing. No, it no, is. Very, very shy. It uh, is. I, I'll invite you uh, in the future someday as a guest uh, host. Yeah, I'm, I'm so humble and honored that you would even have me as a guest. Thank oh, no. you so much. No problem, no problem. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, Dan, any shoutouts from you? Yeah, I do. It's to you, Alpha, from Brony Time. Yeah, thanks for the advice on the gym, because, you know, it's my first week in the gym. Yeah, I'm having sore joints left, right, and center. But, well, hopefully a new start to me losing weight. Yay. Yay. And you, Kelvin, any shoutouts to give up? Shoutouts. Norman Sanzo and whatever Daniel's Twitter is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, follow them because they're really cool. Um, also follow um, follow Osaka Jack. Osaka Jack's an amazing guy. Black Griffin too. Joy the others. They're all amazing people. Yep, yep. And um, man, if I start naming followers, this episode is going to drag up for another few hours. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, 
there's a lot of amazing movies on Twitter, a lot of amazing people on Twitter. So if you get the chance, go follow the people you think are really nice, really interesting. And um, just say hi to them if you can, because they're really cool. True, yeah. true. And if you follow Osaka, Jack, he posts pictures of Japanese toys, and that's awesome. He also posts pictures of sunsets, which are like bloody beautiful. Do yep, yep. you want like new wallpaper? <laughs> Uh, we're not sure about that one, but still, they're awesome. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow at gmail.com. And also, you can reach me at my personal email at norman at the mbsshow.com. And Dan? You can reach me at daniel at the mbsshow.com. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show account is at the MBS show, and I'm at Norman Sanzo. Yeah, and now so that Kelvin knows, mine is St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. All right. And Kel, do you have a Twitter? Because we know you do have one. So no, he doesn't have uh, one. He's on Twitter Network don't because it's so mainstream, right? Twitter, that's that's like Twitter is the thing like um, people use to like to like do to like talk and like 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 I'm screwing up. My Twitter is at Normandy Jaden. Uh, if I spell it out, it will take forever. So uh, I'll link you. Can also it. find me. I'm called. Um, uh, you can find me on call Calvin and Dashi uh, as my Twitter name. So yeah, uh, follow me if you want to. I tweet a lot of stupid stuff. And yeah, just talk to me. I promise I won't bite that much. <laughs> you can find the correct spelling in the show notes. Don't yeah, worry. We'll, we'll put it in show notes. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and also like our Facebook page, please. And well, that's about it. So I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. And Calvin. I've been Norman. I've been Calvin Sia, even I'm calling myself Calvin Sia. <laughs> I'm Calvin Sia, and I'm also known as Desca. So, yeah, thanks for listening all this way. You got a air broke for listening all this way, you yeah. have. <laughs> yeah, true. I already did this out. I already out the boring parts. Well, anyway, we see you next week. Bye bye. Oops. I gave you my heart, and then you turned around. The secrets that we share. The moments that you care I gave you my heart And then you turned around We went streaking in the park Skinny dipping after dark I gave you my heart And then you turned around Depressing melodies Suppressing fantasy I gave you my heart And then you turned around Always wanted my own brother And then he showed up at our door I didn't question where he came from I wasn't lonely anymore Soon we did everything together He taught me how to fly a kite I watched him grow into a stallion I watched him sleep in bed at night It's not creepy But then he signed that record label a kick Montana boyish sound But now that everybody loves him I'm just a face out in the crowd I threw myself into my studies To have the world in my control I vaporize the competition Nobody understands me It's not evil I gave you my heart and then you turn around Romantic on your dreams that never came to be I gave you my heart and then you turned around While a brief freak of summit We're a bunch of floating heads Just take it from me, I know you'll come around Though the law forbids it, this is kismet Say I do and see the rest all together Do they do, I love will last forever Since we're not related, it'll be okay different now from what it seemed now life has killed a dream i dream i, I think what norman is right i think what kelvin's trying to say <laughs> is stop laughing at me <laughs> you have a confusing guest okay uh